All right, so we're now moving on to our second video in this unit, and it's going to be slopes of a graph. And once again, these learning objectives are really important for you to come back to at the end of the video. So that this way you can see, did I learn what I need to, or are there any questions I need to ask in class? But students will know first what a slope of a line is. What is a slope? Students will know how to find the slope of a line, either in a table or on a graph. All right, so you'll know how to find it in several ways. If I present the information to you in a table or a graph, you'll be able to find the slope of a line. Students will know the formula to generate the slope of a line. So there is a formula that you're going to learn that you will be using in order to find the slope of a line. And students will know how to determine if a slope is positive, negative, zero, or undefined just by looking at the graph and without having to actually calculate anything. So this way, before you calculate, you can say, okay, I know this is going to be positive. And then when you actually go ahead and calculate the slope of a line, your answer should be positive as well. And if it's not, it'll tell you, okay, I did something wrong and let me go ahead and check my work. All right, so now that you know what it is that you should be able to do by the end of this video, let's go ahead and get started on the actual uh, topics. All right, so before we get into really anything in detail about the slope, I'm just giving you a couple pairs of graphs here. So first we're gonna focus on these two graphs. And when we look and we say, okay, well, what exactly is a slope? Well, you can think about this if you, can picture that these red and blue graphs are a mountain that you're deciding to run up or a hill that you're deciding to run up. You see that their change, each graph is has a different steepness. So this red graph is not as steep as this blue graph is. As you see, the blue graph is increasing or changing very rapidly as it's going up very drastically, where the red one, it's a little bit more, um, not it's not flat, but it's a little bit less steep. So if you can imagine these are mountains, the blue uh, graph we have here is more steep than that red graph. And if we look at these sets of graphs over here as well, the same thing happens. These ones now, we're going more downhill. So if you act like you can imagine you're running down this green hill, you're going downhill much faster than you are going on this purple hill. All right. So when we think about that, if something is more steep or we're talking about the steepness of something, we're actually talking about its slope. All right. When you think about how, uh, if you're walking through a certain neighborhood and the uh, roads go up really high, really fast, and we talk about how steep it is, you're actually referring to its slope, right? But in mathematics, we're not gonna say, oh, something is more steep than the other. We're gonna give a specific and a very precise number to it to say, oh, well, this steepness or this slope is equal to three, or this steepness or this slope is equal to negative one half, right? So when we're talking about the slope of a graph, we're talking about how quickly does the graph change going up and down or how steep it is. If you can imagine it being a hill or a mountain or uh, maybe a road that is going up or downhill. All right. So when we talk about our slopes, we're talking about how steep our graph is or how quickly it changes um, from one point to another as we're moving up and down. All right, so now let's get into the actual real definition of a slope and start going through some examples. But I just want you to just be able to identify when we talk about the slope, we're talking about how steep our graph is. And we can envision that better when we talk about like a hill or a mountain or something like that. So the slope is the rate of change between any two points on a line. So it's telling us how, how is this graph changing? And the thing that's very important, one of the words I need to point out to you is the rate of change and we learned about um, when we learned about um, ratios and rates we know that if something has the same rate or the same ratio it is changing at the same exact rate every time so the slope is never going to change from one point of the graph if it's linear from one point of the graph to another when we have a straight line if we were to pick any two points at any point in that line they would always have the same rate of change if it doesn't then it's not a line and it's not a linear equation. So the one of the key words that you, I want you to focus on here is that, that word rate. And it's telling us that that means it's the same throughout all of this graph, right? And it's telling us how it changes between any two points on a line. And this is to measure the steepness of a line like I was just talking about, right? Some of the ways that you're gonna hear or see them talk about slopes is your change in Y over your change in X. And one of the ways we can denote that is this delta Y over delta x, right? That delta means change in. And another way you're gonna see this being said as well is rise over run, right? So it's telling us how much we're changing rise, so vertically going up and down, 
how much we're changing run, which we refer to as horizontally left or right, right? So what we can do is we can find two points on a graph. And if you notice here, we're going to be strategic when we pick these points, they're picking them exactly where they intersect in these corners, which then means that it's intersecting at two whole numbers. If we were to try and pick where it's intersecting here, we might not be able to tell exactly where it intersects at that point in the next one. So we wanna make sure we're strategic when we pick these points. And if you see from these two points, we will go up one, two, three units to get to that next point. And then we're moving two units to the right. So when we go up on a number line, we know that that is positive. When we go to the right on a number line, we also know that's positive. And since we went up three units, we would then say that our rise or a change in y is three, our run or a change in x is two. So this would have a slope of three halves. And one of the other things I wanna point out to you as well is remember this slope never changes from one point on our line to another. So here I see we have another point where we intersect exactly at the corner, which means we have two whole numbers. So I'm gonna see my rise is one, two, three. So I know that that's gonna be a rise of three. And then my run or my change in X is one, two. So you see, even from those points, we still have the exact same slope of three over two, All right? So one of the ways that you can, if you're given a graph is just simply by picking those points and counting our rise over run. But there's also a formula that we're going to learn uh, to go through that we can solve the slope of a line when we're given a table, when we're given points, or when we're given a graph. All right, so for this part of the video, I just want to show you that different ways that we can do this. So I have two points here. I have a black point and a red point. And what I want you to do, or what we're doing, is we're going to create or generate another point using our slope, all right? So we're going to, if I told you we have a slope of negative four over three, and I ask you to generate another point from this black line, well, we know it's our change in y over our change in x. And we know our slope is negative four over three. So we can then say it's negative four over three like this. So from this black point, if I'm draw, um, going to generate another point using a slope of negative four over three, I can count down one, two, three, four. So I know that my next point will be somewhere along that line. And my change in X here is a positive three. So that means I'm gonna go three in the right direction. So one, two, three. So there is my next point. And then I can go ahead and draw uh, a line, if I wanted to graph this, I can go ahead and draw a line going between those two points. Uh, there, going between those two points. All right, so I can go ahead and use that to generate a line. And if I go down, or if I start with the red one, uh, here I have uh, the same thing, my change in Y over change in X. And we know our slope is equal to negative four over three, so I can write negative four over three. So I can go one, two, three, four. However, if I try to graph this one going one, two, three in the next direction, I run off of my graph. So one of the things that we have to be aware of as well is that we can write it as negative four over three, or I know a negative divided by a positive is equal to a negative, and a positive divided by a negative is also equal to a negative. So I could rewrite this, instead of it being at negative four over three, I can say four over negative three. So that this way, if I ran off my graph, I just go in the other direction. And I can show you here, when we rewrite it like this, our change in y or y or a rise is going to be equal to a positive four. So now I can count up one, two, three, four. And now my change in x is a negative three. So I can count one, two, three in the left direction. So that would still generate the exact same graph that we would have if we went in the other direction, right? So sometimes when you're doing this, you might have to uh, go ahead and change uh, the way that your graph is going uh, so that this way we can plot it in the other direction uh, if we need to. Uh, and just remember that if it were to be a positive four over three, uh, we can write positive four over three or negative four over negative three because both of these equal a positive number, right? So sometimes you will need to manipulate and play around with your slopes like that uh, when you're going to go ahead and graph especially if it's falling off the graph that's provided for you. All right, so if I give you this graph here with these two points, and I ask you to give me the coordinates of these points. So for point P, we would see here that we're at two for X. So I know it's gonna be, uh, I'm sorry. I know that this is gonna be two. 
And then for Y, I go up one, so my coordinates will be one. And then for this point Q here, I'm at six for X and eight for Y, so Q is equal to six comma eight. Now, each of these ordered pairs are written in the form of X comma Y, but we have two of them. So when we have multiple um, coordinates or multiple points that we're talking about, or multiple variables as well, a way that we can denote it is we can write the subscript one and the subscript one next to this X and Y to represent that this is one of our ordered pairs that we have. And for this one to represent that it's still representing an X and Y ordered pair, but a different number, we can write this subscript, subscript two underneath of it. And see, this is telling us that this two and this six both represent an X in our coordinate planes. However, they represent two different numbers. And we know that based on that X one and Y or X one and X two. And here we have our Y values of one and eight. They both represent a Y in an ordered pair, but they're representing two ordered pairs or two different coordinates. And that's how we can represent that by saying an Y1 and a Y2. So when we write this X1 and this Y1 underneath uh, next to our numbers or as an ordered pair and X2 and Y2, these are representing, well, this is one of our ordered pairs, X and Y, and this is a different ordered pair. If I need another ordered pair to talk about, I can write the subscript three next to it to say, hey, this is another ordered pair that we can graph in our corner plane of X and Y, but it represents a different point. And we denote that by these subscripts. So these subscripts tell us that we have different points or different ordered pairs that we're looking at. And it's really important that you understand that because now we're gonna talk and get into the formula for the slope. All right, so. We're now gonna go ahead and solve these questions. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly just because um, it's just basic uh, addition, subtraction, division. But one of the things you have to be aware of is this letter M now. So when we see this letter M, that actually represents the slope of a line. So this is our formula to find the slope of a line. It is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And this also represents our change in Y over our change in X. Because remember, if we're saying how we learned, you would have learned before, and we did it in sixth grade. Um, when we're finding the distance between two points on a number line, we can subtract them to see, okay, well, how far away are these? And when we're talking about the change in Y or the change in X, we're talking about the distance between those two points. So what you need to do first is first we need to look at our two points. So I see I had this point negative three and one, and then I have a point negative five, negative four. Now it doesn't matter which one you denote as your X one, Y one, but you are going to pick one of them. I'm just gonna pick this, my X1 and my Y1 because I feel like it, because I wrote it first. And that means this one will be X2 and this one will be our Y2. The thing that you need to make sure that you are aware of is do not mix up your numbers. If we're talking about A order pair, then they need to have the same sub, uh, subscript. So these are both our X1, Y1 because we're talking about the same order pair. This is X2, Y2 because we're talking about this order pair. So now if I'm using the formula to solve for this, I would say that my uh, slope is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So you all should have this formula written down. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and plug in. So our slope is equal to, well, our Y2 is negative four. So negative four, our Y1 is one, so minus one, over top of X2, which is negative five, minus our X1, which is negative three. So now it becomes, negative four minus one is negative five and negative five minus negative three turns to plus and that will then give us negative two which should then our final answer is going to be positive five over two because the negative divided by negative is positive all right so i'm just going to go down the line with this so here i have negative two comma three as my one point and three comma two as my other I'm going to go ahead and denote this one as my X1, Y1, same thing, just because I feel like it. And this one, my X2, Y2. And then I'm going to plug it into my formula. Well, I have Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And then when I plug it in, my slope is then equal to, well, my X, my Y2 is 2, so 2 minus 3 over top of 3 minus negative 2. And remember, when we're subtracting, because it's minus a minus a negative turns a positive. So our slope is then going to be equal to minus three is negative one. Three plus two is five. So our slope is negative one over five. 
You will always simplify your fractions just as much as you can like we would have on any other problem. Here we have the points of negative 1, 5, and we have 6, 5. Once again, it doesn't matter which one you label x1, y1. I'm just going to continue by labeling my first one my x1, y1, and my second one my x2, y2. I'll plug it into my formula. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So my slope is then equal to 5 minus 5 over top of 6 minus negative 1. Well, we know a minus negative turns a plus. So now I'm left with 5 minus 5, which is 0, over 6 plus 1, which is then equal to 7. And 0 divided by 7 is 0. So this actually has a slope of 0. And we're going to go through this in a little bit more detail as to how we can identify that just by looking at our graph. And then the last one we're going to is this one over here. We have the points of 4, 6 and the points of 4, 2. Same thing, x1, y1. And I have x2, y2. I'll plug them into my equation. So our slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So then my slope is going to be equal to um, 2 minus 6 over top of 4 minus 4. Well, 2 minus 6 is equal to negative 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. However, we can't divide by 0. That gives us something that is undefined. So that is how we will describe this slope. This slope is actually equal to undefined. All right, so I'm going to now show you uh, a way that you can remember how we can identify if our slope is positive, because you notice this is a positive, this one's negative, this one's zero, and then we have an undefined slope. So I'm going to tell you how we can identify that just by looking at our graphs without actually doing any of the work. All right, one of the ways that you can identify your um, graph, whether if it's positive, negative, zero, or undefined, just by looking at it, is we read our graphs left to right, just like you would a book. And what we can do is we can imagine if you were at the very left-hand part of the graph that you have. So we're, we, we're here. And we're going to walk on our graph. Well, where or how are we walking? So here this person is walking uphill. So that tells us that it is a positive slope. So we know that if we look from left to right and we're going up as we go, or we're walking uphill, if we're imagining a person walking on that, then it's a positive slope. Here, if this person starts on the left-hand side of our graph, and they're walking, now they're walking downhill, that is actually a negative slope. So as we move left to right, if our graph is going down, then it is a negative slope. Here, if this person's on this graph and they're walking left to right, they're not walking up or down, it's a flat surface, that means that it is a zero slope. All right, so here we can say flat surface, it is a zero slope, so as we're moving from left to right, there is no change in it, it is staying horizontal. And here, there is no left-hand part of our graph. There's just a top part that this per person can stand on. And if they try to walk any direction, well, they would actually fall off of this. And if you can imagine that this is like a hill that we've been talking about, well, they're falling off the cliff. And when they land, their body is going to be undefined, all right, because there's nowhere for them to go and they'll be flat at the end. So their body will be undefined. So here, when we have a vertical line, we know that it is going to be an undefined slope. And we can just imagine putting a person on the leftmost hand side of our graph and seeing, well, when they walk on our graph, are they moving uphill, positive, downhill, negative, flat surface, which means zero, or there's nowhere for them to walk. And when they do, they fall off that cliff and they become undefined. All right. So that's one of the ways that you can remember what your slope should be before you even do anything. So this way you can check your work. All right. I know this video is kind of long, so I'm going to try and go through this one a little bit quick. Uh, there's one more example we're going through. So if this, if I give you a table and I ask you to go ahead and give me uh, the slope for this, well, we're going to use our slope formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when we have a table like this, each of these columns represents an ordered pair. So we can go ahead and think of all of these as their own individual ordered pairs. So we have an ordered pair of 1, 8. We have an ordered pair of 4, 6. We have an ordered pair of 7, 4 we have an ordered pair of 10, 2. So if, since I tell you that all these points lie on a line, we know that their rate of change is the same no matter which ones we pick. So in this case, you would just pick any two points. I'm gonna pick the first two just because they're the first two. And I'm gonna label this one as my x1, y1, and this one as my x2, y2. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my formula. My slope is equal to y2 minus y1, so it'll be six minus eight over top of x2 minus x1, so four minus one. 
Well, six minus eight is equal to negative two. Four minus one is equal to three. So there is my slope, negative two, three. When you're given a table like this, you can then go ahead and find the slope using two other points and make sure that they match the same, that you got it correct. All right, that is it for this video. I apologize for it being so long.